Shalom, family. Shalom, gods. Welcome to the Patriarchy is Dead. Coming to you guys today with another video. And of course, we're going to be talking about Kevin Samuels because the disinformation is just, it's at an all time high, okay? But before we get into it, I want to show y'all this short clip. Fair use, fair use. It's for women, the ERA, Phyllis, not Phyllis Lapley, she was on our side. When all this stuff came in, feminism, second wave, feminism, I'm a feminist. I believe in feminism. Feminism is about choice. Oh, yeah, so you really are. Excuse me, ma'am. Feminism in its true form is about choice. I don't even want to hear. Yeah, we don't have a choice right now with what's going on. No, you have a choice. She just exercised one right now. It got too hot. She left. No, I'm going to stop it. I just had to play that. This man said he a feminist and he support free choice okay free choice this man is such a hypocrite and i just want to point this out to you guys because at the same time he's saying he's a feminist and he supports free choice he's talking about conquering oh men want to conquer men want to conquer right well is that free choice for the other people that you're conquering or are they making a free choice to be conquered is that making any sense? Let's just delve into this video because there's so much hypocrisy. And I don't know if people actually have discernment to be able to point out the hypocrisy. Now, I want to start by saying um, this whole debate is about can women survive without men? And I want to say yes, because I don't know if you guys have taken a science class, a simple science class in elementary or even middle school. You are taught the basic needs or survival. And I'm sorry, man, on the list of basic needs or survival, man is not listed. Man is not listed on the basic needs of survival for women. The basic needs are of survival are water, shelter, and food. Water, shelter, and food. Those are the only things you need for survival. Let's just look it up. We must have food, water, air, and shelter to survive. If any one of these basic needs is not met, then humans cannot survive. On this list of ba basic needs by NASA, I don't see man listed. I don't see men listed as a basic need for women to survive. But yet Kevin is pushing this narrative that women can't survive without men. This is a totally false narrative. Food, water, air, shelter. That's all we need, ladies. <laughs> That's all you need. Food, let me say it again. Food, water, air, shelter. Man is not on this list. You know, my problem, and I addressed this in a comment to somebody, and let me pull this up, because I actually said I was going to address um, their comments. I was going to address their comments. Um, but I, what I said what, to this person was, you know, they, they keep trying to push this um, Kevin Samuels narrative. And what I said was, Let me see. I'm just read this comment. And what I said was the video asked, can women survive without men? And the fact that you and Kevin want to put women in a compromised position to make yourself right is the equivalent of a person who can't win the argument. So they redirect to personal attacks. The problem is you men keep trying to place women in situations that is not truly needed for survival. So what this guy was saying was men build all the streets and the roads and women can't survive without them. OK, and what I'm explaining to this man is I said, the problem is you men keep trying to place women in situations that is not truly needed for survival. Cars and streets and electricity. Those things are wants, not needs. We need to understand the, the difference. You're adding narratives to make it seem like an impossible feat or an impossible situation for women when it really is not. It's quite simple. Women don't need anything that men built to survive. God in nature has already provided the necessary sustenance, which is food, air, water, and women can build shelter. Shoot, you can go live in a cave for all I care. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, why do why are y'all pushing this narrative? It's like y'all want to control the narrative because not only do y'all want to say women can't survive without men, y'all want to put them in a situation. Y'all want to build the narrative around the situation. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, cars, streets, oh, this, that, the sewers, this and that. Why those are not things that women need to survive. Those are not included in the basic needs of survival. Then he they keep talking about women can't well this whole conversation started because somebody said women can't lift their own body weight and I said that's a lie. I worked in the club uh, for for about five years when I was in my younger 20s, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yes, uh, women can lift their own body weight. Y'all ain't never seen these women on headstands hanging off the poles and all that other stuff. My point is that y'all are making up stuff. There are plenty of women out here who can lift their own body weight, and I'm one of them. So I know for a fact. I know that for a fact. Like, let's stop pushing our beliefs on other individuals without a scientific fact, okay? Without scientific fact. Now, I want to address, because Kevin Samuels keeps saying, so we address that. Women only need the basic, the basic, needs, the basic needs for survival to survive. We don't need nothing that no man built Kevin Samuels to survive. I'm sorry. Science says otherwise. They say we only need food, air, water, <laughs> and shelter. Okay? I'm sorry. We don't need the electricity you build. We don't need the roads you build. We don't need none of this stuff. All of this stuff is actually causing more problems than, than what is helping. It's causing ecosystem problems. It's causing global warming. All of this crap that y'all say man built and we need to survive. No, that is a want. You want a car. You want to drive down the street. You want electricity. You want running water. But those things are not a necessity to survival. They're not a need. We need to understand the difference between a need and a want. Between a need and a want. Now, Kevin Samuel said that men civilized the world. He keeps saying this. Now, this is where the hypocrisy comes in. Because all while he's saying that men civilized the world, he's saying that they go and conquer, right? Man is conquering, so they civilized the world. Well, conquer and civilization is actually contrary to one another. Because when we talk about civilization, we need to understand that the word, the root word in civilization is civil, okay? And what does civil mean? Civil means relating to a citizen, citizen or a household, a family, right? Let's keep going. Law. Hold on, hold on. Let me just pull up the definition. Hold on. Civil as a as an adjective means civil courteous or polite civil courteous or polite kevin is saying that men civilized the world meaning they taught the world to be civil courteous and polite all while conquering them when you conquer people that's war that's killing they don't have nothing to do with civil courteous and polite <laughs> do we understand the meaning of these words that we're using it was women who civilized the world. Agriculture was the beginning of civilization. Agriculture was the beginning of humanity or people or families being able to settle down in one space because women created farming. And we didn't have to roam around like animals anymore looking for food in search of food because that's what we used to do. We didn't stay in one place. So like the Indians, they had teepees because they were easy to like fold up and carry with them because they traveled. When women civilized the world, when women <laughs> civilized the world and created, when women created agriculture and taught people how to be polite, courteous and civil, that was the beginning of civilization. I don't know what Kevin Samuels is talking about. The, the industrial re revolution was not the beginning of civilization. Agriculture was. The Industrial Revolution was like a mass production of what agri agriculture was already doing. 
And see, the problem is God set it up so that we could, if you don't work, you don't eat, right? You're only supposed to be able to take what you can work for. But what the industrial revolution has done, it has made it to where people can get more than what they work for, which is calling, causing an imbalance, not only in our society, but in our natural habitat and our ecosystem, right? It's causing famine and poverty and it's disturbing the ecosystem, right? But yet these men are priding themselves in saying that they civilized the world. No women civilized the world. Men are killing the world with all of the industrial crap. So women taught the world how to be civil, courteous, polite. And we understand this even when we go into religion because in metaphysics, the woman is personified as the law, mayat. When we go into Egyptology, even when we go into the Christian Bible, the woman is called the law. It says, keep the, forget not the law of thy mother. Okay. The, the woman was always personified as the law in all religions and all cult symbolism and all metaphysics. The woman is personified as the law because she taught the law. She taught courteousness and politeness. She taught to treat others how you want to be treated. And that's the law. Jesus told y'all that. Oh, no man, anything but to love one another for he who loveth one another has fulfilled the law for this. You shall not kill. You shall not steal. Man is doing it. When you conquer, you kill, you steal. <laughs> you, what? That, that has nothing to do with civilization. Like, are we understanding the words that we're using? It was women who civilized the world, not men. Even when you get into the words like city, those have feminine meanings. Even in the Bible, it tells you the city is what? The bride, the bride, the city, the holy city is the bride, right? The city is always personified as the woman. When you read the book of Jubilees, it tells you that all the cities were named after the woman. Ham, uh, Ham, Japheth, and Shem made cities and built them and, and named them after their wives. Why? Because the woman is the cornerstone of civilization. <laughs> The woman is the cornerstone of civilization. It was the mothers who civilized the world. So citizen or civil etymology to lie down, to settle, home, family, love, beloved. That word beloved in Egyptology actually means Mary. America is a Mary Ka. Ka means spirit, a Mary spirit because the woman is called the spirit, right? Y'all don't even know like the words y'all use, like even that the world that y'all live in America is named after a woman, a Mary spirit, and that the word country actually means vagina. So when you get down to the root and etymology and the linguistics of these words of civilization, civil city, metropolis, which means mother city, country, which means vagina, etc., it all goes back to the woman. Why? Because women started civilization but yet we have this man being a hypocrite the hypocrisy saying that man civilized the world through conquering when conquering is 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 hypocritical it's a direct contrast to what civilization is relating to civil law okay the scriptures say keep forsaken not the law of thy mother okay So the reason why I point this out is because the whole conversation was on fairness. All while saying Kevin, all while Kevin Samuels is talking about fairness and he's saying men don't care about fairness. But yet saying they civilized the world when civilization is all about what is all about being fair. It's all about treating others how you want to be treated. Civil law. It's all about upholding the law, the law of God, the law of nature the cos the cosmetic law the cosmological law of nature which we call mayat personified as a, a feminine principle so i just want to get into this i had a piece of paper with some of the um stuff i wanted to address and i don't even know 
where the piece of paper went. I must have dropped it when I was walking to my car. Oh, it's in my pocket. Hold on. Let's see if I address everything on this list. So, yeah, so Kevin Samuel says men are not fair, but somehow civilize the world. Okay. Also, uh, when Kevin Samuel says he's a feminist, right? He says he believes in equal opportunity. But when you conquer people, you're actually taking away their equal opportunity because these people worked hard for what they have. Like I said, you don't work, you don't eat. Yet people who don't want to work, lazy, they don't want to work. They want to come in and take what other people have. They want to conquer other people. They want to take what other people have because they're too lazy to work. They're too lazy to get it themselves because that's what conquering is all about. When you go and take from other people, it's because it's something that you don't have. You're going to take in what you deem as valuable that, that you don't have. So when we're talking about conquering, that has nothing to do with civilization. That's actually the exact opposite, okay? The exact opposite of what civilization means. Now, they keep talking about women can't survive without the in infrastructure. And I want to say... Yes, majority it is majority male workforce. Okay, workforce. Let me let me throw that out there. Workforce, <laughs> workforce. But we need to understand that it was a lot of women behind the architecture that you that the workforce is building. No architect, no building. So we can keep saying that man build, built, 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 built. But who was the architectures behind this? Okay, I want to read this. Let's say, and failing to recognize the authorship of people involved in each project, architecture, to borrow the words of American sociologist Joe Friedman, is a system that oppresses people as people. And while this system affects both sexes who disappear in this pyramid, uh, pyramidal uh, structure, under Starkitect, it has proved practically, uh, particularly, I'm sorry, harmful to women architects, conspiring to make their contribution invisible. In her essay, Sexism and the Star System in Architecture, first presented in a lecture in 1973, Dennis Scott Brown describes this undermining of women as a clear consequence of sexism in academia and the profession. The irony is that under the current system, whether women are workers within a large firm or stars at the top of a practice, they are often not attributed with authorship of the work. They are oppressed by the fact of being a woman. So when we talk about man did all of this stuff, we need to understand that a lot of this stuff that y'all are attributing to men Man was actually done by a woman and then a man just like they do today conquer they take 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 and put their name on it right let's look at this um before we go there let's just look up fair because fair means to be it in, in accordance with the rules or standards is that not what civil is the law the rules the standards so you saying men don't care about being fair, but then they civilize the world. What? That's a contradiction. That's a contradiction. That's a contradiction. Even when you talk about the word fair, it says a beautiful woman. So when you get into the etymology and li linguistics, all of these words go back to the woman. Y'all better study language because y'all don't even know which the language that y'all speak and y'all casting spells on yourself. You cursed. You cursing yourself. You're cursed. Okay, so I had an article up. Where is it? Let me see. Let me go back. I'll go back to here. I'll come back to that article. Women in architecture. I just want to show y'all an example of this. So I say, uh, So look, let's, let me just show you how women do stuff and then men put their name on it. So I say two European women stand out as early examples of women playing an important part in architecture, designing and divining the development of buildings. Message. You can pick up residence papers at Burkhardt desk. Message. You can pick up residence papers okay. at Burkhardt desk. I'm at work, y'all. I'm on break. I really need to hurry this up because I'm past my break, really. 
Um, but I got my walkie, so if anything happened, I can just hear. Playing an important part in architecture, designing or defining the development of buildings under construction. In, in France, Catherine Briconet was influential in designing uh, the Chateau de, I'm not even about to pronounce it, in Loire Valley, surprising the construction work between 1513 and 1521 and taking important uh, architectural decisions Hold on. While her husband was away fighting in the Italian wars in Italy, I'm not going to try to pronounce her name, worked with her brother Basilo and alone on chapels and places near her home. In Britain, there is evidence that a lady Elizabeth Wilbraham studied the work of Dutch architect Peter Post, as well as I'm not even about to pronounce these names. <laughs> but anyway, it's a um, she has been put forward as the architect of Woden House in um, Buckinghamshire and of many other buildings. It has also been suggested that she tutored Sir Christopher Wren. Wilbraham had to use a, a male architect to su supervise the construction work. This is now research including that by, by John Miller to show she may have designed up to 400 buildings including 18 London churches previously attributed to her pupil sir christopher ran so this woman created 400 buildings and 18 london churches that wasn't even attributed to her they were attributed to a man so, so because because they have hid the truth about women in history and religion and in science etc so many of us don't know the truth and we perpetuate lies like parrots it's ridiculous okay so y'all can just read about these female architects I just read y'all. Hold up. Wait. Let me show y'all something else. Hold up. Women's influence. Although until recently their contributions have been largely unnoticed, women have in fact exerted a fair amount of influence on architecture over the past century. It was Susan Lawrence Dana, heiress to a mining fortune, who in 1902 chose to have her house in Springfield, Illinois, designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, so ensuring his breakthrough. Women have also played a key role in historic preservation through organizations such as the Daughters of the American Revolution. In 1985, Bulgarian architect founded the International Archive of of women in architecture to expand the availability of research materials concerning women in architecture. Recent studies also show that from the 1980s, women as housewives and consumers were instrumental in bringing in new approaches to design, especially interiors, achieving a shift from architecture to space. So what they are saying is it was these women who were saying how they wanted their houses to look, who influenced the way that architecture was going. A study on experience and experiments in Canada highlights the widespread contributions women have made in recent years developing innovative approaches to practice and design. Women's significant and growing presence in the, prof in the profession has attracted more attention than issues. It has attracted more attention than issues of marginalization. Exhibitions presenting women's achievements in various fields provided early opportunities for women demonstrate their competence in designing pavilions. They, in, they included the 1893 exhibition in Chicago where the woman's pavilion was designed by Sophia Hayden and two in 1914 in Germany. So I'm not going to continue to read this, but I just want to show y'all how we talk about the building process. Oh, that the men are the workers. It's like the queen and then the worker bees. Like, just because you the worker don't make you the, the um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you the worker. You're not the architect. You're the worker, B. So don't try to put yourself on the throne because you doing you the worker, B. Oh, my goodness. This is outrageous. So I'm going to end it at that. I'm not even going continue to keep going i just wanted to show y'all the hypocrisy how can you say that men civilize the world through conquering when civilized when civil and conquer are directly in disalignment with each other it was women who taught people how to be civil how to um
how to be polite, etc. So it's a sexism and the question of authorship not only affect the present, they also distort the past. How this occurs is illustrated in Canadian historian Cynthia Hammond's examination of the work of Nicholas uh, Pavsner in his survey of English architecture. He describes Lady Elizabeth uh, Welbram's built work as an enterprise of Lady of Welbram or writes that Wilbram is credited with the design. No other work in his book has these awkward designations, writes Hammond. Okay. So we're going to say, denying proper authorship leaves young women and students without role models, allowing them to think that women have historically been virtually absent in the profession. This assumption is supported by the lack of scholarship, research, and published books on the work of women architects. Scott Brown pointed to this lack of publication with respect to her own career. For a few years, writers on architectures were interested in sexism and the feminist movement. In a joint interview, they would ask Bob about work and question me about my woman's problems right about my work I would plead but they seldom did prominent women who worked in the shadow of their colleagues partners or husbands are not recognized in existing publications okay so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up but I just want y'all to understand I just told y'all women are the creators of agriculture but I bet y'all didn't know that I bet y'all didn't know that a woman built over 400 buildings and all her work was accredited to a man this is something that's been ongoing okay ongoing this is not nothing new it's nothing new under the sun shalom family i'm gonna wrap this up till we meet again